because of exactly that. They're the feast of the Lord and they're the seasons of God. Not of man, but of God. And to walk in the light of God, to walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Now I'll throw this back on. Plug it in. Now, Brother Brad fell 30 foot out of a tree and crushed his talus bone on the left leg. A lot has happened. 2009, Brother Brad was electrocuted with 440 and literally was dead for over four hours. And God raised him from the dead. So I thank God for that. Somebody said, I've never seen a person raised from the dead. Well, there he goes. That was in 2009. And healed, and I know many of you, you've been healed of various sicknesses and disease. Now, he uh, has a call on his life. And the Lord, as we get out a little deeper in the water, things change. And they change according to the will of God. And this is, we have preached this word for some 40 years. And mostly tents and churches and revivals and other things outside of the local assembly where we have the Lord direct us here and we're, we've got a building here. Gospel Tent Revival starting May the 14th, Thursday night. Wednesday night we'll be picking up um, James, Elder James Fox from Long Island, Bahamas. He'll be with us. And uh, his wife. For almost the duration of the revival. We'll be broadcasting that from the tent. A lot of people have never seen or been to a tent revival. Therefore, we're going to bring it to them over the airwaves. The crew, what we're trying to do there is the fundraiser to pay for all this stuff. Uh, we'll have you going Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then we're going to cut it off. And with Thursday, beginning the revival, uh, you'll be with us. We'll be all in the uh, tent, tent revival. Be praying for that. How many's praying for it? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Lord thy God that changes not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob will be consumed. Jesus. The Father of glory, the God of salvation. Jesus, God is my salvation. Hallelujah. You can come down quite a bit. It's not in the shout. All these young preachers, they like to get that, uh, that shout going and you young, get the holiness hat going. And I had one preacher say, well, I'm, I'm a preacher that is... Uh, uh, Worship service, I get the praise going. You don't get no praise going. You can sit there and never say a word and worship God more than somebody that's hanging off the chandeliers. Hallelujah. Now, with that said, it's all in your actions and your words and your work. What are you doing for God? What are you doing for God daily? Amen. What are you doing for him? Are you judging the body of Christ? Are you praying for the body of Christ? You can judge it, or you can pray for it. If you pray, well, whichever joint supplies to the edifying himself in love, then the body of Christ is edified, and it's built up in the Lord. 
You see, revelation doesn't come by just reading the Word of God. Revelation comes by the good that you do. And when you have done good, the him that has, he'll be given the more. The him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has. All on how you hear. Somebody said, well, that's just hearing. That's just understanding. No, it's hearing, understanding, and doing. That's the reason the word of God, somebody said, but faith alone saves you without works. That's not what my Bible says. You know, you talk to most Christians on the street and they'll say, well, I'm a Christian. I'm saved, sanctified, and on my way to heaven. I was saved 35 years ago. Well, you're, be you're saved, you're being saved if you continue in the word. If you continue the word. You have to continually walk in the light as he's in the light. What if happens if you got saved 35 years ago and you just quit reading the word of God? You sit in a pew you gave to God to get some money, have your needs met, and then all of a sudden the day of judgment comes. The grounds of a rich man brought forth plentifully. And he said, so what shall I do for I have much goods? I know what I'll do. I'll pull down my barn and build greater. Then I'll have much goods stored up, stored up, stored up for many years. When you start storing up for that rainy day, you're going to have one. You have much good stored up for many years. The voice came from heaven that night and said, Thou fool, this night thy soul is required of thee. What was he saying? Did he blaspheme something? So is he that is rich toward himself and not rich toward God. Hallelujah. So the Lord requires obedience, obedience to his word. Growing up into him in all things. He gave a five-fold ministry. Turn it down a little. Five-fold ministry. A five-fold was Jesus whenever he went and he ascended up to heaven. What is he first? That he ascended, that he first descended into the heart of the earth. Where's the heart of the earth? It's Hades. He never went to Gehenna. And there, as in the days of long suffering of Noah, where eight souls were saved by water, like figure which baptism does also now save us. Somebody said, well, what's in the heart of the earth? Where's that great gulf that Abraham said, there's a great gulf fixed between you, rich man, and Lazarus. A great gulf fixed between us. He said, just have Lazarus dip his finger in water, and the water always in the word of God is the waters of truth. To the sinner, to the wicked, it's the angry billows. It's the judgment of God. It is uh, the wrath of Almighty God. To the believer, the crystal sea before the throne of God are the knowledges of God. For out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. What is the living water? This is he that came by water and blood. Not by blood only, but by water and blood. Where is that? Where is the, where is the water? There's three that bear record in the earth. Spirit, water, and the blood. These three agree in one. Where is it? He came by water and blood. Came by water and blood. Well, there's a crystal sea before the throne of God, which is the knowledge of God. For out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. This he spake of the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. What are we saying? We're saying that Jesus is that man that came down from heaven. Not glorified flesh. Not divine flesh. But we don't have a concept of that. You see, John 3.13 said, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And Jesus was talking to his disciples right there in shoe leather. That man is not a humus, a human, a man in a humus body. He's not a man encased in a dirt body. A man, nonetheless, God is not a she. He's not an it. He's a he. Ezekiel said, God goes forth as a man of war. He goes forth as a man. God is a man of war. You see, that man is Jesus Christ. He is that spirit, the Lord. We have to have a revelation of Christ. Well, who is Christ? As you have been taught Christ and being established in him, there's a mystery of God and the Father and of Christ, Colossians 2. 
That's your full acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Let man, no man spoil you through vain deceit, at the philosophy of man, at the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Then where do you get three? For in him, the mystery of God, well, that's what somebody, well, that's, you know, God, there's, there's three persons there. No, the mystery of God and of the Father. That's the mystery of the Father. And it's the mystery of Christ. It's a mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. In whom, singular, are hidden. Why would God hide that? All treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus said in John 16, Behold, I will no more speak to you in Proverbs. Dark, hidden sayings. But I'll show you plainly of the Father. Why that? Why not plainly of creation or the angels? No, I'm going to show you plainly of the Father. Because why? The Father is hidden from the world. In whom the heart is not right with him. For the pure in heart will see God. John 8, 24. When you go to John 8, 13, they came to Jesus and they said, you bear record of yourself. Your record is not true. He said, no, I bear record of myself. My record is true because I'm not alone. They said, I don't see anybody with you. You're one man standing alone. I don't see anybody standing there with you. Jesus said, it's written in your law. The testimony of two men is true. I'm one that beareth witness of myself, and my Father that sent me, he beareth witness of me. Well, they can, where, where's your Father? I don't see your Father. All I see is you. You are that human being walking right there. What they don't realize is there's another man there. He's an invisible man. He's the invisible God, but he is Nonetheless, that man that came down from heaven, the son of man which is in heaven, and that's not divine flesh, that is the man, the spirit. You see in 1 Corinthians 15, it said the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The second Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first Adam was of the earth, earthy. The second Adam was the Lord from above. Well, they didn't understand that. So Jesus, they said, I'm worth a bear the records of myself and my father that sent me. He beareth witness of me. They said, where is your father? <laughs> where is your father? Jesus said, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. You're from beneath. I'm from above. You're of this world. I'm not of this world. What is Jesus telling them there? He's telling them, I am the Father. I am the Father of glory. Then where do we get all this trinity that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost? You know where we get it from? Council of Nicaea, 325 A.D. Because no one knew and had written down, we just had the Word of God. What's wrong with having the Word of God? Well, we're going to have to put it in man's creeds. When man gets into it, you can be rest assured. And not being led of the Holy Ghost, you've got problems. Man got into it. Constantine, who read the book of Tertullian, who read Timaeus, made by Plato, said that the universe was in three different spheres. And that's where Tertullian got... Three different in the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. 325 day came out with the Nicene Creed of a Trinity Gospel. And it has taken the world because everyone there, it decreed in that Nicene Creed that if anyone did not confess the Trinity, God the Father, God the uh, Son, and God the Holy Ghost, that they would be convicted of heresy and burned at the stake. Wow. What if I were to tell you that God's going to try us greater than that? What if I were to tell you that God's going to try us as by fire? What if I were to tell you that in the seals, trumpets, and vials, the seals that 
in the last days, we have seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vows. And only the Lord was able to open the seals of the book. And that's the book of this prophecy. It's the only book in the Word of God that has a blessing and a cursing with it. Not Genesis, all the way through Jude. None of them have a blessing or a cursing with it, except one, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he does it in Revelation 22. He said, if any way, take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, his name shall be taken out of the holy city and out of the book of life. If any man add to the words of the book of this prophecy, the plagues of this book will be added unto him. He is the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. What is the first thing that the first beast in Revelation 6, 1 says? Come and see. Come. Come and see. You see, the first one is a lion. Four beasts before the throne of God. And somebody said, well, those are the angels of heaven. No, they're not. No, they're not. You see, in Revelation 3, in Revelation 3, after the fall of Adam, by one man's disobedience, sin came to the world and death by sin. Even so, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. And after that fall, the Lord speaks unto the serpent and says, you shall... I call upon thy belly, belly, dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. I put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise his head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's the first messianic promise of the Hamashiach, the Messiah, Jesus the Messiah, Genesis 3.15. He comes on down, and he set, drove man out of the garden, and paradise was lost at that point. Paradise was lost. Communion with God was lost. Man had failed. The conditional eternal life, that if you can eat of all the trees except the tree of knowledge, for on the day that you eat of the tree of knowledge, you will surely die. And Adam did, we know. Notice at the end of the chapter, Genesis 3, it says, and he placed at the east end of the garden, Cherubim, capital C. Not a small C, a capital C, cherubim of glory. And a flaming sword that, that turneth every which way to keep the way of the tree of life. Not to keep man out, but to keep the way of the tree of life. What is the way? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The tree of life, I'm going to submit to you, is the cross. Mentioned four times in the Word of God, that tree of life that giveth life. Set in the midst of the tree. I'm saying that those cherubim there set at the east end of the garden and that flaming sword turning ever to which way to keep the way of the tree of life is none other than Jesus Christ. Amen. Those cherubim are not angels. It's a capital C. It's the Lord and his four faces, lion, man, ox, and eagle. At the east end of the garden, R-E-M-D, eastward. You know why it's eastward? Because eastward is the work of the Holy Ghost. Always whenever it's going eastward. It's always the work of the Holy Ghost. Whenever he said they have going to seal the servants of our God in their forehead, and I heard the number of them that were sealed, and were sealed 144,000. He did not write 144,000. He wrote RMD 1,000. He used the Greek letters RMD 1,000. R100, a gematria of 100. M, a gematria of 40. D, a gematria of four. And then he wrote thousand. <laughs> RMD thousand. Why? Because RMD is the same gematria as east or eastward in Eden. It's the same work of the Holy Ghost, Jesus himself. Somebody said, Jesus is not the Holy Ghost. Yes, it is. I never forget, I was preaching over in uh, Florida many, many years ago, and I said, Jesus is the Holy Ghost, and they literally kicked me out. Wow. I was supposed to have been in an apostolic church. See, Jesus said, I pray the Father send you another comforter whom the world cannot receive, 
because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You see, there's two areas of the Son of God. Who's the Son of God? He's the Father manifest. He's the image of the invisible God. You see, John 1, no man has seen God at any time. But the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, being in the form of God, Spirit, Philippians 2, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Nobody's equal with God except God himself. The Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. That Word is God. Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be God, made himself of no reputation. Well, he's got to have a man. He's amazed that he finds none. Therefore, he said, mine own arm brought salvation to myself. What the church world does not understand in the external church, I'm not talking about the real church. I'm talking about the external church in the world is that God himself put a self-imposed limitation upon himself in the word of God in Philippians 2, 6, made himself, Jesus being in the form of God. God is a spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus being in the form of God. What form? Spirit. Thought or not robbery, but made himself of some reputation. No reputation. No reputation. Why would God do that? That is only mentioned one time in the word of God. Thank God Paul put it in there for us to let us see the semantics of how God works salvation in and of himself alone. He made himself of no reputation. That literally is a Greek word, kano, K-E-N-O, long O, K-E-N-O-O. -O. It means to lay aside your dignity and glory. It means to humble yourself. Are you telling me that God humbled himself? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. There's nowhere in the word of God that it said the father spoke to the son and said, go down and die for the sin of the world. Right. Somebody said, well, God sent his son. Yeah, but you better look at how he sent him. Galatians 4, verse 4, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. How? Made of a woman. Made him under the law. That's how he sent him. Well, who was that? Son of God. What is the son of God? The manifested invisible God. The world tells you that the Son of God was manifest in the flesh. That is a lie out of hell. That's an image, too. You see, if you can't have an image of the image, if you have an image of something, there's the image. But if you have an image of the image, then you've got a falsehood. Well, the beast gets his strength, power, and authority from the dragon. There's your trinity. These are three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the beast, coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. These are spirits of devils working miracles. Why would God allow that? But those that want to be deceived. Who sends strong delusion? Oh, really? If the prophet be deceived, I, the Lord God, have deceived that prophet, and I will destroy him. Well, what determines that? Did God harden Pharaoh's heart? Pharaoh did it himself. Your heart determines your own destiny. Amen. Now, guard your heart. Out of it proceed all the issues of life. In the heart of man, it determines whether it's heaven or hell. The heart that's set on God, that stays on the Lord, will be blessed, will be saved. But the heart that turneth away from God, seeketh their own, Hired harlings, trees twice plucked up by the roots, clouds wherein there's no water, wandering stars made for destruction. You see, the word of God will always accomplish that word it's sent. For some, they're a savor of life and the life, others a savor of death and the death. All determined on how you receive the word of God. We have been taught in the church world and the external, when I say church, I mean the external church. I'm talking about to the church of the earth, the general so-called Protestant religion. And we've been taught that there's nothing else. 
I mean, you're saved, you're saved, that's it. Thank God I got that taken care of. And that's it. But notice in every one from Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, from Sardis to Philadelphia to Laodicea, every church he said, I know thy works. Well, why is, he, why is the Lord concerned about works? Because those works are the works that accompany salvation. Because faith alone cannot save you. Show me your faith without your works, I'll show you my faith by my works. We have taught dead grace than any old way will do. Just uh, give some kind of acknowledgement of Jesus and you're saved. You know, I believe Jesus was here. I believe he died for my sins. I say the sinner's prayer. Therefore, I'm saved. You better look at it again. If you hear somebody say, well, I quote Romans 1 and 9 verse 10, you know, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. You better look at that again. Romans 9 10 says, if you will conf confess with your mouth, not just Jesus, the Lord Jesus. Every knee's going to bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That Lord is not second person of the Godhead. It is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. In the Greek, it's Kyrios. In the Hebrew, it's Jehovah. If you do not confess Jesus Christ as the Lord Jehovah God Almighty and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Somebody said, well, I believe that. Yeah, Jesus said, you destroy this temple three days, I will raise it up. I am that father that raised up my own body of flesh, but there is a secret there. It's a mystery there. What's a mystery? That God, Jesus being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made himself of no reputation. This is the spirit side. Jesus in the form of God, made himself of no reputation, took upon him, this is the flesh side, took upon him the form of a servant. Wait a minute, he's in the form of God. Spirit can't transmute into flesh, and flesh can't transmute into spirit. Jesus said, that which is spirit is spirit, and that which is flesh is flesh. That's right. That's the reason why there is a partition, a middle wall of partition. Ephesians tells them, too, there is a middle wall of partition. The law, and what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh, God sent his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. How? He had to fulfill the law. How are you going to fulfill the law? You're going to have to be tested, tried and everything and fulfill it in every jot and tittle of that law. How's God going to do that? He's going to make himself of no reputation. Jesus in the form of God made himself of no reputation, took upon him. He's in the form of God, took upon him another form. Took upon him the form of a servant. Hmm, think about that a minute. Not the Son of God. You see, the mystery of godliness, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. We're not saying it's not. 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. No, no, Brother Beard, the Son of God was manifest in the flesh. No, he was not. That's where you've got an image of the image. Jesus, as the Son of God, is the image of the Father. Amen. He's a manifested God. He is the God of glory. He is the Father. You've seen me. You've seen the Father. Amen. The words that I speak are not mine. The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. How many do I have to heal? The sick, cleanse the liver, raise the dead, cast out devils, open blind eyes, loose the dumb tongue, the lame walk, and the captive go free before you understand that I with the finger of God cast out devils. Amen. Not the Son of God, bless the Lord God, God. The kingdom of God is the Holy Ghost. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It doesn't come with observation where they say, Lord, where are low there? But it's within you. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus is that Christ. We haven't been taught Christ. I preached sometime, uh, I was about 30 years of preaching. I never heard Christ preach one time. I heard he's the Father, heard this, heard that. But started in the revealing of Christ. Who is this Christ? 1 Peter 1.10 said, the Old Testament prophets searching what or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ that was in them. Amen. 